Hello, it's Jennifer from Sea Lemon. You may have noticed from my Instagram posts and some videos on this channel that I've been really getting into bullet journaling and a lot of you have asked for a video on it. It's a really great way to keep organized. So in this video, I will give you a little introduction to it and show you how I use it and my page layout. Okay, what is bullet journaling? It's basically a pen and paper system which you can customize to suit your needs. It's a way to keep track of your daily tasks and goals and organize them as well as your future tasks or goals. And it can also be where you quickly document or creative journal or doodle something from your day. If you're new to bullet journaling, I advise that the best place to start is with this video. It's made by the inventor of the bullet journal, writer Carol, and he has a brief overview on how to start it and use it. There's also an official website, bulletjournal.com, where you can find a lot of inspiration and information about the whole system. It's a great place to start if you're new to this. And there is also bullet journals for sale on that website if you want the layout that he uses. Going there first can give you a great structure to start from, but you don't have to follow it exactly. Like, I don't have an index. I don't have the exact same structure as what he shows, but it's really a great place to start, and then you can kind of break the rules and customize it for yourself. Unlike a planner which has expensive pages and books, this is like a do-it-yourself type of organizing system. You can do this in any type of book you want. Whatever makes you motivated to journal and whatever type of book you like, go for that. There is no official book to use, although he has bullet journals on his website. You can use whatever you want. Literally, all you need is a pen and paper. The reason I started using this is I am a big list maker. I will make to-do lists every day, and I use Google Calendar for my monthly outlook on things that I need to get done, but I wanted something in between that wasn't a planner because I'm really not a big planner user, but I wanted something similar like a to-do list and a place to document bits and pieces from my day, and that is where I discovered bullet journaling. So for my bullet journal, I use a disc bound journal. And you guys might remember my video on how to use disc binding, disc binding for beginners. I will put that video up here. And that is why I chose to use disc binding because I can work with it in my existing workbook. This is the book where I keep all my creative projects, all my projects from Sea Lemon, and it's such a system that has helped my brain that I can't stop using it. I was really indecisive on if I should do a bound book, if I should use a Coptic stitch book, but in the end, I just went to the disc bound system because I can easily take a page out of that which has all my tasks, and then I can put it into my workbook, and that just makes both of these systems work well together. If I ever need to bring this whole book somewhere, I can take my bullet journal page along with me. And if you want any ideas on different books you can try, books that you can make, I will put my playlist up here full of book binding tutorials so you can figure out which one you want to use. And if I wasn't using this disbound system, I probably would have gone with a Coptic stitch book. Also, if you're wondering about any of the products that I'm using, I will put full lists and links down in the description below. Another reason why I like using disc binding for my bullet journal is that I can use multiple different colored pages. I can use a dot grid, a regular grid, a blank pages. I can really switch out any page that I want. And plus if I mess up on a page or if I just don't like it, it doesn't have to stay in my book. I can easily take it out and add an extra page on in. Using discs is really great if you're indecisive like I am. You just really don't know what kind of paper you want to start out on. It's really good for that. So I like to use really thick paper, especially for this disc bound system because I think thick paper just pops in and out of the discs easier. And I print my own dot grid onto it. And special treat, if you want that dot grid that I use, I will put a PDF or a downloadable link in the description below if you want to use that on your paper as well. All I do is print it out on an eight and a half by 11 inch paper, and then I cut it in half for my junior size bullet journal. The covers that I use are from Levenger along with the discs that I use, and if you do want some DIY options for disc bound covers or dividers, go check out this tutorial up here. I will also link it in the video description below. So how I use my bullet journal for completing tasks, I will always refer to my Google Calendar. I like this for my monthly outlook. I don't want to use pages for a month spread. Some people like to do that to list a calendar on their bullet journal, but I prefer to use Google Calendar and keep it all digital on my computer. 
But from there, I look at what I need to do and break down those tasks and expand them in the bullet journal. So rather than put a bunch of little tasks onto my calendar and making it all cluttered, I put all of that stuff in the bullet journal. A typical bullet journal will have a key and that is what you refer to for different symbols and icons for your tasks, events, personal, whatever you need to write down. And for my key, I have a dash for work tasks, a small circle for personal tasks, and a dot for a note. And when a task is completed, I just fill in the square on my grid paper, and then I fill it in halfway if it's a half completed task. When something is no longer relevant or I need to migrate it forward, which means just putting my task in a future day on my calendar, I will just cross it through. And these are the icons in the system that I use every day. And this system can be whatever you want. You can draw hearts for events, you can draw a triangle, a square, whatever you want, and whatever you think will keep you more organized. The typical layout for my page is it's basically a continuous to-do list. I'll write the day on the left along with the day underneath. And by the way, I do not have good handwriting. That's a personal preference also. Some bullet journals are just so beautiful, but I do prefer them to be more productive than pretty. Sorry if this handwriting just like grosses you out. And then I will assign a color to each day. And then I just list all of the tasks that I need to get done. There is really no order. It's just whatever comes to mind. And if there's a personal thing that I need to get done, like workout, maybe I need to get dog food that day. I will put that icon there and then just continue that same system throughout the entire day. That's why the continuous layout really works for me because some days I won't get that thing done until the next day. So I can just go back and fill it in if I've accomplished that. If there's something that needs to be done at a specific time. Sometimes I will write that time on the left of it in between the days. And when I do want to journal something or document something from the day in doodle form, I usually do that on a separate page. I've tried a lot of different layouts on this. I used to start a week with just a blank page of just some kind of design on it. I started out using the line grid for my pages and then I switched to a dot grid. And if you want to try a system like mine, you can use any pen of your choice. Uh, this is with highlighters. Sometimes Sometimes I'll outline it in the color of the day so I know that's what happened on that day. And if I want to do a, a small quote, I've been using the Tombow Furunsuka Furasana Fura something. I can never say the name right, but I will put that pen in the description below. I'll try a doodle that's about something that I'm really liking that week or month. Like these candles, I was really all about fall when it was happening, so I really liked the pumpkin. You guys might remember the favorite fall drinks that I did. Not only does the bullet journal help you keep organized, but it can also be therapeutic when you keep track of things and thoughts from your day. And it's fun to flip back through your bullet journal. I've tried a weekly grid layout where I just segmented all the things that happened in a day in squares or rectangles. You can add quotes or one word from the day, or you can do something more organic. I did this page around Thanksgiving week. I just doodled some of the things that had happened that week and some of my favorite things around that week. I'm kind of using this as a mini sketchbook slash visual diary. Something else you can try is a habit tracker and you can devote a separate page to a specific goal and this will help keep you accountable. For example, this habit tracker that I'm trying this year is my goal to do three workouts per week. And again, my handwriting is just yeah, so you can use this as inspiration to try if you want to. I put the month, put dots on the dot grid. You can, of course, use any shape you want. You could fill these in with circles. You can draw little open circles and you can also make a key for your tracker. So let's just say this one is jogging. Maybe you want to do some blogilates. You can put a specific color for each workout, and then you can go into those squares and fill in depending on which workout you did. And eventually, if you keep up with it, you'll have a whole grid of colorful squares. And I will tell you that missing a day just kind of mentally like bothers me. And if I don't get to fill in that square, it's just like my week is kind of incomplete. I know it's just weird, but it does keep you accountable in that way. If you're one of those people that just gets a little bothered by a space not being filled in. And maybe if you don't want to do like a whole page tracker, you can also try this in your daily spreads. You could try a little space on the bottom of your page or the top of your page and just write like Monday, Wednesday, Friday if those are your workout days. You can also try a horizontal layout that just says 
like workout or whatever you need to get done and then put the spaces next to it. I've seen some people try this for drinking water, just keeping on track of the amount of water you want to drink in a day and keeping on top of that. So you can really use these trackers for any daily or weekly goal you have. You can also try like a brain dump page. Uh, sometimes it's just really great to get out whatever's stressing you out in the form of tasks that you need to get done. Maybe you just have something that's really stressing you out and you just need to list all of the things, work-related things, personal things, and you can use all of those icons that you made to organize those and then go back to your brain dump page and fit them into your daily or weekly spreads. If you're interested in more inspiration for like additional trackers or uh, page layout inspiration, there is like a huge bullet journal community online, especially on Instagram, I like to search hashtag bullet journal or hashtag Bujo, and there is just so many posts of inspiration that you could go from. There are some YouTube videos on it, and I've made a few so far, including this one, so I just might start a bullet journal playlist, which you can always find on my channel. And I also have a Pinterest board. If you want to check that out, I'll include the link down below. I will also include some of my favorite uh, Instagram accounts or any inspiration source that I like to go to in the video description below. I will put a huge list down there. And just a disclaimer on this whole thing, if you are overwhelmed, don't be overwhelmed. If you're looking at images for inspiration, it can be really overwhelming. And I literally like spent hours of my free time just looking at bullet journal posts. I started out by seeing pictures of bullet journals and I think that really like got me hung up on, oh, it has to be like this, it has to be like that. It can really be whatever you want. If you have time to put to a bullet journal pages that you're making, that's great. But if it's just taking away time from you and it's not being productive, then I think you should rework it because I think this is supposed to just really help your brain not stress you out on making pretty layouts. That's just an opinion. I just like to keep it simple and remember productive over pretty. If I have time I'll make like a pretty page and there's nothing wrong with that but you don't want it to interfere with this whole system helping you and being productive. So find a balance and find just the bare minimum of things that help you and add on from there if those extra additions are going to help you as well. Maybe I'll make a bullet journal update video in the future. Let me know if that's something you want to see. Hit that like button if you do. If any of you are bullet journalists, bujoists, I don't know what the right word is. If any of you do bullet journals too, I would love to know if you have any tips. So leave those in the comments below and I will most likely be doing more bullet journal doodle videos in the future. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any of those. I will put some related videos around here. Again, hit that like button if you want to see more and I will see you guys next week.